Hello, my name is Samuel Keith Harris, and welcome back to another episode of Morning Devotionals. Let's start our day with Jesus. Father, I thank you that we can come into your presence and worship you, Lord, and lift up your holy name. God, we come to sit at your feet to hear of your word, to be changed by your word, God, so that we can glorify you by living pure and holy lives as we wait for your return, Lord Jesus. It's in your precious holy name that we pray, and everybody said, Amen. Well, if you have your Bibles, turn to Psalm chapter 81. Psalm chapter 81. And we're going to be reading the whole chapter. So Psalm chapter 81, and we'll start at verse 1. The scripture says, Sing praises to God, our strength. Now let's just pause right there. That's a beautiful little portion of this scripture. It says, Sing praises to God. Why? For he is our strength. The Lord is our strength. The scripture says, Let the weak say i'm strong so if you're feeling weak if you're struggling if temptation seems to be overtaking you that you're giving into it sing praises to god and know that god is your strength ask him to fill you with himself ask him to break the chains the bondages the sins that would try to ensnare you and as the scripture says let go of every weight and the sin that would so easily ensnare you and fix your eyes on jesus the author and the perfecter of our faith so sing praises to God, our strength. Sing to the God of Jacob. Sing, beat the tambourine, play the sweet lyre and the harp. Blow the ram's horn at new moon and again at full moon to call a festival. For this is required by the decrees of Israel. It is a regulation of the God of Jacob. He made it a law for Israel when he attacked Egypt to set us free. So the Lord has ordained that we would come into his presence singing for joy because he's freed us from our bondages and oppressions of the past you know i used to be a servant of sin i used to be a slave of sin and a servant of the kingdom of darkness but now i've been translated into the kingdom of his dear son i've been translated into the kingdom of light the kingdom of god we've come to know god when we've been brought out of our former state of sin into our new state of our new nature which is to be like god in true righteousness and holy holiness as ephesians would say but i love this he wants us to come praise his name now that he has delivered us it says i heard an unknown voice say verse six now i will take the load from your shoulders i will free your hands from their heavy tasks so this is the lord speaking now i will take the load from your shoulders that heaviness that you feel because sin brings death in your life the the depression the bondage that you live in the anxiety the lord says i'll take that from you i'll take that sin that traps you that heavy burden from you i'll free your hands from their heavy tasks verse 7 you cried to me in trouble and i saved you now that's what the lord's looking for He's looking for you to cry out to him in your trouble, in your struggle, in your sin. And here's what he wants to do. I heard you cry out in trouble and I saved you. I answered out of the thundercloud. So the Lord will save you. The Lord will answer that cry. He will answer that plea. It's a common thing in the scriptures where David will say, Lord, I cried out to you and you delivered me. The Lord does not deliver when some, eh, I could want to be delivered, could not want to be delivered. I kind of want to stay in my sin, but I kind of want to be delivered. No. When you earnestly detest and hate sin and you cry out to God to be delivered, when you earnestly hate and detest your depression and your anxiety and your life of your life of wickedness that you're living and you cry out to God for salvation, he will hear those cries. He will answer those prayers speedily and he will deliver you so that he can get glory out of your life and he'll do it because he loves you and wants to know you intimately and for you to know him because the ultimate purpose in life is to know him and to make him known so let's look at this it says you cried to me in trouble and i saved you i answered out of the thundercloud and tested your faith when there was no water at meribah verse 8 listen to me O my people while i give you stern warnings now, many people don't like to listen to warnings from the scriptures, but God's saying, listen, my people, as I give you stern warnings. So I pray that we would listen to this. We would take this instruction. We'd put it into practice and see the fruits of peace, the fruits of righteousness show forth in our lives. It says, 
Listen to me, O my people, while I give you stern warnings. O Israel, if you would only listen to me. And that's God's desire, that his people would listen to him. And the scripture says that we are now the Israel of God, which just means we are the people of God. And God is saying, O my people, that you would listen to me, that you would listen to my instructions because I'm for you. I'm not against you. And all throughout the scriptures, the Lord would say, I'll bless you if you'll just listen to me. But people are so prideful, people are so stubborn, they refuse to listen to God and receive the blessings of God just by being obedient to the Lord's voice and listening to the Lord's voice. It says, you must never have a foreign God. You must not bow down before a false God. For it was I, the Lord your God, who rescued you from the land of Egypt. And we know how that worked out with the Israelites. They actually carved gods they made with their own hands, then said that the gods they had just formed with their own hands were the, very, was, were the gods that brought them out of the land of Egypt. Isn't that a little deranged thinking? You just made that God and now you're attributing your deliverance, which happened in the past, to these gods that you just formed. Okay, that is a slap in the face to God who actually delivered them by his strong and powerful arm. And it's amazing he didn't even wipe them out because of that. He says, for it was I, the Lord your God, who rescued you from the land of Egypt. And you know, if you've been delivered from sin, it was the Lord your God who delivered you from sin. It wasn't therapy. It wasn't counseling. It was the Lord your God who is a mighty counselor that delivered you by his powerful, strong right hand. Glory to God. It says, open your mouth wide. I'll fill it with good things. I'll fill it with blessings. Verse 11. But no, my people wouldn't listen. My people would not listen to me. Israel did not want me around. Now let's examine this for a little bit. My people wouldn't listen to me, the Lord says. They didn't want me around. I guarantee you they wanted the blessings of the Lord. I guarantee you they wanted the healing of the Lord. I guarantee you they wanted the prosperity of the Lord. They wanted the peace. How do I know that? Because if you look in the prophets, people always wanted to listen to the, the preachers that were preaching prosperity or blessing or anything that doesn't call me to account for my life. That's what the popular preaching was. But they don't want God around. So we want God to bless us. We want God's favor on our lives, but we don't want God around. Why? Because he'll call us to account. He'll examine our every motive, why you're doing what you're doing. But people want God's blessings, but they don't want God around. And that is heartbreaking because he's looking for a people that love him. It says, so I let them follow their own stubborn desires. Since they didn't want me around, I let them follow their own stubborn desires, living according to their own ideas. Verse 13, oh, that my people would listen to me. That's the heart cry of God. Oh, that my people would listen to me. And that's what he's saying to you today. Oh, that you, whoever you are, would listen to the Lord's voice today. Oh, that Israel would follow me and walking in my paths. Oh, that they would follow me, that they would walk in my paths, that they would listen to me, that we could have this fellowship together. How quickly I would then subdue their enemies. All those things they're fighting and trying to get rid of, all those bondages they live in, how quickly I would subdue their enemies. You know, when I gave my life to Jesus, I, I was living a wretched life. And it brought depression. It brought anxiety. I was full of sin. I was full of addiction. I couldn't get free. I tried to fight... Um, my depression. I tried to fight my anxiety. I tried to stop being abusive, but I couldn't. My enemies were overtaking me. The demonic powers were overtaking me that I was joining in with. My lust was controlling me. Everywhere I went, I'd be full of lust. Everywhere I went, I'd be full of anger deep down, irritability, right? And some of you can probably relate to that. But he says, if you would follow me, if you'd walk in my paths, how quickly I would subdue your enemies. So if you want the Lord to subdue those enemies in your life, the sin that's that's tormenting you, you have to say, Lord, I'm going to follow your paths. I'm going to walk in your ways. And then the Lord himself will deliver you. You couldn't get rid of those things, but Jesus will crush them in a moment. It says, how soon my hands would be upon their foes. Those who hate the Lord would cringe before him. And we know that demons fear and tremble at the sight of God. It says they would be doomed forever. 
but I would feed you with the finest wheat. So you're my people, here's what I would do for you. Your enemies would flee. Your enemies would be terrified. Your enemies would cringe before me. But you, I would feed you with the finest wheat. I would satisfy you with wild honey from the rock. And the Lord wants to satisfy him, satisfy us with wisdom, with water from Jesus, with the water of the Spirit, the wisdom of the Word of God. He wants to satisfy you. So today I pray that you would turn to him with your whole heart that you wouldn't let anything infect that relationship with him. If you've been abiding in sin, let go of it today. Let the power of God hit you right now and be transformed. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that whoever's listening to me would be delivered from their sin, delivered from their oppression, delivered from their bondage in the name of Jesus. I pray that they would glorify you by living lives in you, Jesus, and that a new chapter of their life would start today a life that's fully submitted to you and surrendered to you and your will and your ways, God. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. And everybody said, amen. Well, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Morning Devotionals, and I'll see you next time.